Hey everybody, so we've been building and installing signs for over 35 years now. Rick's been doing it even longer because it's old. Now, we show you a ton of welding footage during our projects, but we never talk about why it's so important. Right, because bad welds or not following proper welding procedures are some of the most common reasons for failures on big signs and structures. Whether we're putting an eight foot ant on top of a sign for a pest control company or placing a 40 foot long sign on top of Camping World Stadium, we have to make sure we follow the strict guidelines on every project. Because when you get too comfortable, you try to cut corners, especially with welding, it can be catastrophic. Most people would think that we just build signs that get stuck on a wall somewhere, so we don't have to worry about building codes. That's definitely not the case. All of our sign projects require permits and inspections, and our engineers, designers, fabricators, and installers work hand in hand to ensure that all of those safety protocols are met and exceeded. For example, every one of our signs are wired with LEDs and power supplies that have to meet strict electrical codes so they don't cause a fire. Sometimes our signs are hundreds of feet in the air and are supported by massive, heavy structures. If they're ripped away from the building that they're attached to or they collapse and fall, it can be catastrophic and kill or severely injure any pedestrians below. And we are fabricating large projects like this all the time. Those Paramount mounting brackets we created held that sign up 200 feet above a busy sidewalk. That crazy meridian sunshade weighed over 4,000 pounds and people are sitting on benches beneath it every day. Those two massive AC hotel blade signs, we had to install them on the weekend and at night because the pedestrian traffic is so busy beneath them during work hours. That giant Et Hotel sign that we installed on the roof is over 150 feet up in the air and it extends out over the edge of the rooftop parapet, sitting directly over the main entrance to the hotel. And if you go to watch a sporting event at Camp and World Stadium here in Orlando, all of those giant signs on top of the stadium, Bud Light, Massey Pest Control, and the Camp and World Stadium signs themselves, we built and installed every one of them. So every game, 65,000 fans are sitting beneath our huge, heavy signs. So all of our projects have to be fabricated with the strongest materials available and constructed and welded together flawlessly. So if you think we're being overcautious with this, just in the past two years, there have been three catastrophic accidents that investigators believe were a direct result of bad welding practices. Yeah, May 3rd, last year, an elevated subway track in Mexico City collapsed and killed 26 people. An independent report put much of the blame on bad welds. The report centered on photos and physical inspections that showed that metal studs welded to the top of steel support beams had broken or sheared off cleanly, suggesting that the welds were defective. The beams could not carry the weight of the track bed on their own, so the studs projecting upward from the beams were covered with a poured concrete slab to help carry that weight. Yeah, but when they looked at, when they actually, the concrete broke away, the, the stud still had the protective ceramic ring around it that should have been broken off after the welding was taken you know happened but just the ceramic rings being on it shows that it was never inspected yeah obviously you, no you know there inspected. was never even a visual inspection there was no mag particle no ultrasound no nothing nobody saw those after they were done they just filled they just covered them with concrete that's scary stuff man yeah. you know i mean to know that that's why this is so important i mean people's lives are in jeopardy mm -hmm. with not having those proper procedures or inspections yeah. in place well i'm sure they had the procedures but somebody didn't follow them because they obviously if you're doing a structure like that that's supporting an elevated train then you got to make sure you have all the proper inspections well obviously they didn't yeah, and something that we deal with a lot in here in Florida is high winds and hurricanes. So we have to take that in consideration when we're doing our engineering. Right. In Halifax, Nova Scotia, it was the remnants of uh, Hurricane Dorian took down a big crane. Yeah, according to Nova Scotia's Department of Labor, the, the collapse was a result of a failed weld where one of the diagonal support members came into one of the verticals. So instead of transferring the weight to all four vertical pieces, once that snapped out, all the weight shifted to the three and caused it to of kind of crane, spit. Yeah, and right? caused it to like just collapse and torsion out. Wow. So just one of those weld, one of those failed, 
and then the rest of that step. So it was that close mm -hmm. on the engineering of that structure right. or that crane that they all had to be working in unison. And when one failed, yeah. that was it. Yeah. You know, imagine the cranes moving around, the wind's blowing it back and forth, and the weight's getting shifted probably from different point to point on it. So when it got to the weak point and that collapsed, and it just took everything else over with it. And now working with this SunTracks project with FDOT, we have seen firsthand how thorough the FDOT inspectors are when they're inspecting yeah. our product. Well, they're dealing with things that there's hundreds of thousands of vehicles traveling on every day. Yeah, yeah, not too far from us in Arkansas, the I-40 bridge over the Mississippi River that connects Tennessee and Arkansas was found to have a huge crack in a 900-foot steel beam that supports the bridge. It was suspected that a defect or a stress riser due to the bad connection welds were the cause that initiated the fatigue crack. In addition to repairing the fracture, the Arkansas Department of Transportation had to perform ultrasonic testing on all of the welds on all four of the 900 foot steel beams tied to the twin arches holding up the suspension portion of the Hernando de Soto Bridge. Can you imagine how time consuming it must have been to inspect every single weld on four 900 foot beams going across that bridge? Yeah, that's crazy, man. And that crack, it was this giant crack, right? And what the hell is a stress riser? The stress riser is any defect or flaw uh, or change in geometry that increases the loading on a specific point. It's really, it's more important on bridges because they're going through all four types of stress, compression, uh, tension, torsion, and shear, at the same time, mm. cyclically. So they're turning into an S in front of and behind everything that's passing over them. That stress can be increased by the speed or the weight of the vehicle, and bridges go through that over and over and over and over. Every single thing that's on it is creating that S bend, so it builds stress. So when you have a stress riser, it takes all the stress that's already being built up and focuses it into one spot. I told you this is an educational program, y'all. This is great. And I also read in that report that an inspector had noticed that crack two years earlier and never said anything about it. Yeah, I bet that guy lost his job. Oh, yeah. That's why we understand how stringent FDOT inspections are on all of their projects. Now, maybe you can appreciate the safety procedures and all the inspections that we have to go through. Yep, and that's why several months ago we became proactive as a company, yeah. especially regarding our welding. So we brought in our own third party welding inspector so that we could have more quality control and know if we have any issues before anything leaves the shop and fix it right away. Sean Pride has been inspecting all levels of construction and product safety for over 30 years and he's been working with us on all our larger structures. Everything that's built has a standard. Everything that's made has a standard for compliance in some general aspect. And compliance can come from federal to local to contractual obligations. So it's very important to meet those, those standards because catastrophic things could happen. People can get hurt or die. And until I come in and, and see the well procedure that's developed, and until I see the well qualification, nobody knows if that product is being welded correctly. All manufacturing businesses should be able to put these processes in place because it makes it safer and much more efficient. So Robert, now that we got Sean in here, can you tell us how that's helped? It definitely takes some of the pressure off of me because up until we brought him in, all the heavy steel, I'm going through the AWS book and different weld procedures and trying to figure out what's the best way to weld it for the type of connection it is, the type of steel it is, all that kind of stuff. Sean just tells me this is how it can be done. You know, if it's a it's a instance where I could use multiple different processes, mm -hmm. he says if you want to stick it, you can stick it. If you want to flux core it, flux core it, and we write the procedure to what I want to do, and then I run with it. Yep. Um, but ultimately that calls on him. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, nice. well that's where we're very glad to have Sean here now, especially we have other huge projects coming up. In addition to the third gigantic sign that we have to build for SunTrack. Whoo, the portal sign. And Robert, that means a lot more welding for you. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot more of Sean coming up in these episodes of our welding inspections. And uh, thank you guys for watching the Media One Wrap This YouTube channel. We'll see you next week.